Hello everyone. Today we're going to go through some pulmonary and abdomen views and we're going to talk about the pathologies that you can see in each of those views. We're going to start out with pulmonary. So for pulmonary we can either use the linear probe or the phased array probe. We're going to be pointing the indicator towards the patient's head and we're going to place the probe in between the second or third intercostal space around the midclavicular line. So the first thing I want to talk about is rib shadows that you can see to the picture of the right and what rib shadows are is they're hypoechoic or dark shadows that are directly behind the ribs. And the reason that you see these shadows is that the ribs are so dense that the ultrasound waves can't penetrate the ribs to see anything behind them. So all you see is a dark shadow behind these ribs. Next thing I want to talk about is the pleura and the pleural line. So if you look at on the right at the picture on the top, you'll see the ribs on either side of the screen and you'll see the rib shadows behind them. And just in fear to that, you'll see a white line. Now that's the pleural line. So that's made up of the parietal and visceral pleura rubbing together. And you can see that rubbing together as the white stroke is moving back and forth across the line. So a lot of people will describe that as ants marching or ants on a log. So this is a normal finding. However, if you're looking at a lung with someone with a pneumothorax, obviously the parietal and visceral pleura are no longer rubbing together. And so you won't see those ants marching on a log and this could indicate a pneumothorax. So A lines and B lines. Just remember A lines are awesome and B lines are bad. So A lines are horizontal hyperechoic or white lines and all they are are reflections of the pleural line. So you'll see these in normal patients and they're not a problem, they're not anything you should worry about. However, if you look at the bottom picture, you'll see a picture of B lines. Now B lines are vertical hyperechoic white lines radiating from the top of the screen. So if you're scanning a patient and you see three or more of these lines, that is very worrisome. They may have pulmonary or interstitial edema. To finish off the pulmonary exam, we're going to take a look at the pleural spaces. So for this exam, we're going to need to grab the phased array probe because we're going to be looking a little bit deeper. And we're going to take our probe and we're going to put it in a lower intercostal space anterior axillary line. And we should get a picture of something like the picture on the top right. So the first thing I want to point out in that picture is the diaphragm, which is a hyperechoic line directly above the liver. Now remember, above the liver is to the left of the screen because we have the indicator pointing towards the patient's head. And on either side of the diaphragm, we see what looks like liver. Now this is a normal finding. And what causes this is that the diaphragm is very reflective and it actually reflects back the sound waves put out from the ultrasound machine, making it look like there's liver on both sides of it. Now, if you don't see liver above the diaphragm, we could be worried about a pleural effusion, as in the picture on the bottom. And another way we can look for a pleural effusion is something called the spine sign. Now, normally, you won't be able to see the spine above the diaphragm. And the reason for this is that that area is usually full of air, and air will scatter the ultrasound waves making everything behind it very fuzzy and black looking. But when there's fluid in that area, ultrasound waves can travel through fluid. So you'll be able to see through that fluid and see the spine behind it. So we call that a positive spine sign. So if you have a lack of mirror artifact and a spine sign, then it's very probable that you have a pleural effusion. For the rest of the abdominal views, we're going to be using the phased array probe. So from our last view, we're just going to take the probe, move it a little bit inferior and a little bit posterior. Now for this view, a good way to remember where to place the probe is knuckles on the bed. Because you're going to be having the probe so far posterior on the patient that your knuckles are actually going to be resting on the bed that they're laying on. So the first thing we're going to look at is the liver. It's seen as a large heterogeneous organ penetrated by blood vessels. And you'll see the kidney abutting it inferiorly. And in between the liver and the kidney, you remember there's an area called Morrison's pouch. Now when there's free fluid in the abdomen, it tends to accumulate in this area. So you want a view where you can see the liver, the kidney, and also the tip of the liver if possible. So as fluid begins to accumulate in the abdomen, it will first accumulate around the tip of the liver. And then as more fluid accumulates, it'll, you'll see a separation and hypoechoic signal in between the liver and the kidney. So this could mean that the patient's internally bleeding or has any kind of free peritoneal fluid. We're going to slide the probe a little bit inferiorly to bring the kidney to the center of the screen. Now the kidney is bean shaped, it has a heterogeneous cortex, and it should have a hyperechoic medulla. 
Now in a patient with hydronephrosis, fluid is going to be backing up into the kidney, causing the calyces to dilate with hypoechoic fluid. So the medulla you'll see hypoechoic signal instead of a hyperechoic signal, meaning the fluid is backed up into that area. Now we're going to move the probe to the left side of the patient to take a look at the spleen. We're going to place the probe similarly to how we placed it to look at the liver, only on the left side this time. Mid or posterior axillary line, knuckles on the bed. Now when looking for free fluid in the abdomen around the spleen, fluid tends to accumulate above the spleen between the spleen and the diaphragm, which is different, as you recall, than the liver, where it tends to accumulate between the liver and the kidney. And just like when finding the right kidney, to find the left kidney, we're going to slide the probe a little bit inferior until we bring the kidney to the center of the screen. And once again, we're looking for hydronephrosis, which is seen as dilated calyces, which show up as a, as a hypoechoic signal in the medulla of the kidney. To find the bladder, we're going to take our probe, we're going to place it just superior to the pubic symphysis, with the indicator pointing towards the patient's head. And this is going to give us a longitudinal view of the bladder, which is the view that we want. Now, the bladder is seen as a well-circumscribed, rounded, hypoechoic structure. And you'll see the difference between a male and a female view on the pictures on the right. So in a female view, you're going to see the uterus just posterior to the bladder on the left side of the screen, where in a male, you're going to see the prostate more to the right side of the screen, just posterior to the bladder. Now that we have the bladder in view, we can do a qualitative assessment of bladder volume. To do this, we use the ultrasound machine to measure the hypoechoic area. Now, if this area is found to be less than 2 centimeters, it can be thought of as not full, or if the bladder is found to be greater than 2 centimeters, we can think of the bladder as being full or at least having a significant amount of urine in it. When looking for free fluid around the bladder, we're going to be looking for a dark area, usually posterior to it. However, this is where it depends if you're scanning a male patient versus a female patient. Now, in a male patient, you're going to see the dark signal just posterior to the bladder wall, where if you're scanning a female patient, the uterus sits just posterior to the bladder, so fluid will accumulate posterior to the uterus in the pouch of Douglas. And you can see this in the bottom picture. The last structure we're going to talk about is the gallbladder. To find the gallbladder, we're going to place the transducer on the patient's right side along the inferior border of the ribs. We're going to take our transducer, we're going to slide it along the edge of the ribs until the gallbladder comes into view. So with the indicator pointing towards the patient's head, we're going to find the gallbladder in the short axis view, where it's going to appear as a circular hypoechoic structure. So now we have in that view, we can also change to the long axis view by moving our probe 90 degrees and then having the indicator pointing towards the patient's right side. Now that we have the gallbladder in view, we can assess for the presence of gallstones. The gallstones are seen as a hyperechoic structure within the gallbladder. What really gives away that a gallstone is present is that it'll have a shadow behind it similar to the rib shadow that we discussed earlier. Now sometimes biliary sludge will appear as a hyperechoic structure in the gallbladder, but it can be differentiated from the gallstone because it will lack the shadow left by the gallstone. So this concludes the ultrasound review, and I hope you all found it helpful.